religious language is metaphor. There is no other possible language for religion except it's like. <laughs> Once you hear that, you know that's true. But it's always shocking when I tell it to any crowd. I can see this stunned look on their face, particularly if they're evangelical or raised with biblical inerrancy, and don't recognize that words by their very function are all metaphorical. They're not reality. And that's why the Word became flesh, <laughs> to become substantive so we could touch it and fall in love with it. So I just, I change the prepositions depending on the day and how I'm praying. But God for us, the source out of which all flows, if you see in the classic Rublev icon, the Father is clothed in gold and His hands are joined in a sense of completeness, a sense of wholeness. So he's the source. The, the Son was called God alongside us because it, we Christians believe he became flesh by the mystery of incarnation and walked with us on the human journey. Now we're told that the reason Rublev uh, clothed him in blue is because blue being the color of the sea and the sky was considered the nature of the world. <laughs> the color, the color of the world is blue. And red was that he agreed to suffer the suffering of the world in its becoming. So we call this, of course, the mystery of the cross. And the gold sash is how he, he turned the suffering into resurrection. Then, well, we have them gazing lovingly at one another. We have them both seated around one table, eating from a common bowl, as it were. And then we have the Spirit gazing down at what you might or might not see. But we now have evidence that this original icon still hangs in Moscow. And the recent scientists noticed there was something on the surface here. They scraped it off, put it under a microscope, and they said, it's glue. There was glue in this spot. Huh? If we took this little mylar uh, mirror off, you'd see there's a rectangle painted behind it. And the assumption of art scholars is there was once a mirror glued to this icon. So stay with me. The spirit is gesturing, notice his hand is gesturing down toward the mirror, pointing us or inviting us, you can take it either way, to take our place as the fourth person in the divine flow. This is what we would call our place, the body of Christ, if you will, don't be shocked, the second coming of Christ, this is the second coming of Christ. It's not Jesus returning except in a new form as the embodiment and the endless diversity that God has taken shape in. Isn't this good news? You'll do more than I've done. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Everything I have done you also can do and you will do even greater things. So many scriptures are going to make sense to you now. huh? But to think, and so this, this is my favorite icon. I've always had this hanging in my house and in my office. I think it's the most perfect work of Christian religious art. So the observer gazing here is meant to see himself sitting at the table inside the divine dance. Isn't that good? 14th century Russian mystic Andrei Rublev. They kill him? I, I don't think he was killed. No, I don't think so. This, by the way, for those of you who are biblically literate, it, the, the picture itself is the three visitors to Abraham. Remember, it describes them as men, as angels, as God. If you read the whole chapter, it's very interesting, the overlay of language. 
And so Christians came to see the three visitors who visited Abraham and he bows down before them and treats them as God, as a foretelling of the Trinity. You don't have to see it that way. It's not necessary, but to mystics, it was always very intriguing and very inviting.